Hello everyone and welcome to day two of the mini extravaganza. I am John Schaefer and today I'm going to be talking to you all a little bit about painting squads. Uh, sorry, I'm just pausing my video on my other, my other feed here. So we often spend a lot of time talking about individual miniatures, um, how to paint them in a lot of our streams. We, we talk a lot about um, and cover you know, just the tips and techniques for painting one specific miniature, but we never really talk that much about tying them all together through uh, visual devices or through thematic uh, considerations, maybe basing schemes, things of that sort. So uh, what I kind of wanted to focus on today is um, general theories on creating your own um, color schemes and also um, you know, selecting the colors, limiting your overall palette to make things consistent, assigning certain colors um, to certain types of surfaces like cloaks or armor, etc. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit today about um, doing squad markings on your units to make them very discernible on the tabletop. And finally, just talk a little bit about batch painting and just like painting up units at a time, uh, trying to be as efficient as possible when you're sitting down and... Uh, and trying to like map out your, your overall um, your process for painting things as efficiently as possible. So let's jump into it. Let's uh, let's start off here with um, some of my own personal miniatures and we'll talk a little bit about color schemes. So when I start off um, a new army project, I will always uh, sit down and think about the test models for every individual unit I have. So first thing I, I think like, okay, well, what do I wanna do? What do I wanna achieve with this force? Like what thematic thing do I want to do or gameplay mechanic do I want to lean into? So this this particular force, I'm all about Kashyyyk. Uh, you know, I wanted to make a force, not necessarily as you saw in, say, Revenge of the Sith, but I, I wanted to make a force that uh, had a lot of green in it, you know, that had a lot of uh, items on there that would actually make them feel like they would fight in kind of that uh, tropical kind of beach and forested environment. So I, I select a lot of greens and I wanted to make green one of the main main uh, focusing uh, colors in the overall scheme. In addition to that, I wanted to make sure that I had a good level of contrast. So when I'm sitting down to map out the color scheme for an army, what I will often do is I will limit myself to just five colors. And in the case of this force, those five colors are, let me see if I can just grab all these together in, in one fist. They are these, these five right here. So we've got two shades of green, we've got black, We've got a bone, kind of an ivory color, and then we have this kind of like bluish gray, which is on the rocks. Um, now that bluish gray is something that I, I carry through in a lot of the different armies that I have because I like to base everything the same. So when I create some terrain uh, for my forces and play games, it all kind of matches. So that's that was kind of the deciding factor there. This guy's a bit of an exception. I decided to just paint those rocks in a, a different scheme just for fun on one of the previous streams. So when you're selecting these colors, I think it's really important to not only choose contrasting colors, and that might be different colors on the color wheel, you know, like red versus green, or orange versus blue, um, yellow versus purple, really, really diametrically opposed from one another on the, on the color wheel, it's about as far as you can possibly get. Um, but you also wanna have some variance in your overall value or the lightness or darkness of the colors. And that's why I often like to select at least two of the colors that I have in my scheme to be very close to black or very close to white. So in this, uh, in this instance, you know, we have this bone color, which is predominantly over all of the, uh, the main bulk of the armor uh, on all these miniatures. And then the black is used for weapons, uh, kind of like undersuits or like inner workings, cogs, things like that. And then the green is used as an accent color. Now that doesn't mean that you always have to follow that. Sometimes you want to kind of juxtapose those colors and instead you want to go with, um, like say for this BX droid right here, I decided to make this game mostly black because he's all about stealth. You know, those units want to sneak around a lot, but it still looks cohesive amongst the other miniatures because I've selected similar colors. Now it's a pretty simple concept, um, but I think it's, you know, it, it bears mentioning that, you know, when you're sitting down to map out your army, don't think about it unit to unit. Think about the overall picture and like what kind of force do you want to play with? Like how is it all going to look together on the tabletop? And how can you use kind of a limited palette of colors to define and make everything look very cohesive? So anyway, um, in addition to these droids, I also have lots of examples from my Empire Army. And it's a very kind of similar story where I have selected 
a very limited palette of, of colors, and I'm carrying them across all of these miniatures. Now, some of these are, you know, pretty tried and true to as you have seen them on screen, but some of them I've decided to do a little bit of modification and changes to, like in the case of Snowtroopers, I know I wanted to do a very kind of foresty themed uh, army for my empire, so Snowtroopers didn't have a place for it, but I liked, it, you know, how they played. So I decided to kind of modify these to be kind of more hostile environment troopers, kind of like you saw in Solo. Uh, in addition to that, you know, I've also decided to kind of change up the shore troopers. I love the miniatures. I think they're really cool, but I just, just kind of wanted to tweak a little bit of the color scheme so it would just match the rest of the forces that I have. You know, like a standard, you know, shore trooper might look, you know, I think this is the scheme that everybody's pretty familiar with. Something like that it looks dramatically different. You know, you see these two guys side by side. And it's, you know, this guy in, the, in, in amongst the rest of these would really kind of stand out as far as the color scheme goes. So I decided, you know, I'll just modify it a little bit and tweak it to my needs and just personalize my, my overall collection. And that's I think that's a, a really fun journey when you're sitting down and trying to decide, like, well, what do you want your scheme to look like? What do you want your forces to look like uh, all together? As you as you carry on, uh, this last version down here, this is uh, an um, Imperial Special Forces uh, miniature, but I've decided to add a little bit of that green down in, into the uh, the fatigues, and then also add this red stripe on there. So um, when I'm I'm thinking about the color scheme that I have for my Imperials, you know the the overall palette that I have is uh, let me just grab these paints again. You know th this is that you know you've got this is our bulk color that we use for armor. This is what we're using for undersuits and contrast. This is a white that we use for the stormtroopers because I knew I wanted to have stormtroopers in there and I wanted to paint them white. Uh, the brown I utilize for cloaks um, and other leather components. And then this lighter color is uh, one that I use as an accent color here and there. So in the case of the shore troopers, for example, because some of them have uh, kind of these commas that go down that I knew I wanted to paint in this darker color, I didn't want to have those two right next to one another. So I've opted to uh, use this lighter tan for the pants and some of the uh, fatigues. So uh, the, the other little bit here um, and the other color that I've added in here and a decision that I made early on is I wanted to have red just as like a slight little accent color here and there. I use it very, very minimally and I use it very selectively as well. So I, I uh, intended, I, was, I knew like down the road, I wanted to include Royal Guard. They're like one of my favorite things in Star Wars as far as uh, um, characters go. Um, and I knew that I wanted to paint them red because that's just like, you know, the iconic depiction of them. And I knew that they were just going to stand out, you know, in, amongst the rest of my forces pretty dramatically. So, but if I add just little hints of red here and there, and I save that for the, the most elite units that I have in my army, then if I decide that I want to do something really thematic that's all about, you know, rallying around a, a character, like a powerful character like Vader or Palpatine or something, that red device spread across the rest of the army will make it look like this is like the elite contingent of my forces, which is a, which is a kind of just a, a cool approach. So sometimes when you're thinking about the colors that you're selecting, think about like, well, why in, um, like in universe, so to speak, like, you know, if this was a real army, like why would they decide to use that? You know, and it might be that, okay, well, red would denote that, oh, these are the most elite forces um, in the detachment and, they would be recognizable on the battlefield with other uh, with other friendly forces. That oh, th these are you know the the leadership of um, of the the units that were deployed. Something to that effect. So, um, in extension, uh, you know, there's also a lot of instances where you decide that you want to make modifications to the overall color scheme. So again, Krennic, in his you know uniform his bright white uniform i thought would look very out of place within my forces so i opted instead to paint uh his uniform in the kind of standard imperial colors and that was also like a real um deciding factor in that green that i wanted to put across everything is like i, I love how the officer uh, uniforms look in star wars i really like that across the board so i can take that color and i can apply it across a lot of different um a lot of different miniatures and it can still kind of like stand out like, you know, that kind of fatigue color when it comes to cloth denotes officers or leadership or, um, you know, kind of elite soldiers in general. So, yeah, th these are just modifications to an existing color scheme, changing it to suit your needs and to fit in with the rest of your forces. Um, 
I also decided that I wanted to make the cloaks on the characters a little different than the cloaks on a uh, on some of the other miniatures. I um, I love scout troopers; they're like one of my favorites. So I like to um, I decided to add cloaks to all of the unit leaders for both my scout bikers and then also the infantry that I have. So th this is made out of green stuff. I can probably cover this technique in a future stream if you guys are curious about it. But um, just just adding some personalized details and things to the miniatures um, and just like little devices like that, you know, um, saving that kind of cloak treatment and that sort of thing for the scout trooper. You can see I kind of added one here to the, the sniper that I have from the strike team. And if you just kind of apply that across all, uh, it's just a device that you have, not only in the color schemes that you've chosen, but just like a slight modification that you decided to apply to, um, to those forces. So let's, uh, let's kind of shift gears a little bit and let's talk a little bit about squad markings uh, and how you want to actually denote your units on the tabletop. So kind of as I mentioned before, you know, I'm, I'm saving this kind of red up here on the upper part of the pauldrons to denote that these, you know, my unit leaders would have that kind of marking on them. Uh, I might apply that across all the other short troopers that I have, but for now I kind of keep it uh, somewhat limited. But in addition to that, sometimes you might have multiples of the same um, unit and you need to, to, to pick them out in some sort of simple and straightforward way. So the way that I've done that, and I've got a couple different examples here of some stormtrooper captains, really, really simple thing. I just took those pauldrons and I just put some stripes on the top. So squad one has just got a single stripe, squad two, two stripes. You know, it's, it's not... It's not anything really fancy, but it's something really easy for me to do. And then at a glance, if I'm, if you know, if say these two units have different, um, you know, tokens on them or something like that that I'm tracking on the unit cards as opposed to putting the tokens next to the miniatures on the tabletop, it'll help me uh, just keep them straight a little bit as I'm going through and deciding the overall color schemes and what units are uh, going to be uh, just keeping them straight when I'm sitting down and playing a game. Uh, when it comes to vehicles, and I guess I should also uh, kind of show show a couple of, of uh, the vehicles that I have for my Imperial Army, I've also chosen the exact same kind of color scheme. But what I've decided to do for my vehicles is I wanted to um, have an Imperial symbol, and I had a friend, you know, make me some water slide transfers for that Imperial symbol. Um, but I wanted to have a kind of like a, a series of a stripe to kind of on the armor that I have. Uh, and this is, you know, a work in progress. I'm, I'm kind of just chipping away at this one now. And I'm also at the same time working on an occupier tank. So uh, same sort of situation here, but for this occupier, I have not yet put that stripe in, but it's going to go behind here and it's going to travel up and over the top. So all of the armor that I have will um, have an imperial symbol on it, and then I'll have that kind of stripe that goes through it. I'm also thinking about possibly adding something like that to my speeder bike. So all of the um, all of the vehicles that I have in my Imperial forces will have a kind of like a similar um, device that will kind of carry across all of them. So uh, I, I guess the other thing to note here is that I've, I've made some modifications and some adjustments to the color scheme of the pilot. So again, I've decided, okay, well, this is a device that I want to utilize by just taking those pauldrons and painting the top half of them another color. And in this case, this green on top of the white would be utilized for um, any of the kind of like support units that I have or the heavy units that I have, if there is a miniature that goes alongside it. So we've kind of talked a little bit about you know, establishing your overall color scheme, which you have, but you can certainly have some departures from that as well. So in that case, I'm, I'm also working on a, uh, on a do back right now. And I, I just wanted the do back to stand out, and I also wanted to do something kind of fun with it, so I decided to paint it like a Gila monster um, with these kind of like uh, magenta and black stripes. I modified the, the actual driver by taking one of the heads from the, uh, from the occupier tank. He's not secured to the base yet, so he's kind of wobbly. Uh, but again, the, the same sort of basic devices, right, where you just take... Uh, and paint a stripe here over over the top. I think the the one little bit that I might want to add, if I if I want to consider it, is putting the upper part of the pauldron and also being in in that kind of green color that we have. Um, but you can see, like you know, amongst the rest of the forces, this one's going to stand out a lot because of the introduction of this you know this really 
kind of unique color in this magenta tone, but the rest of it is all handled in very similar in a very similar fashion. We use the same sort of green. We've got the same sort of device across the top of uh, the helmet there. We've across the board just use very similar uh, approaches when it comes to uh, how we're distributing the colors across uh, the, the entire miniature. So yeah, anyway, so I just wanted to talk about all that stuff. It might be very straightforward to some people. Um, you know, you just, okay, you just use the same colors across the board. That's that's really easy. But I, I've oftentimes, um, you know, in my discussions with new painters or, or even people that are experienced, they just, they really struggle with deciding on what their color scheme is going to be and how they're going to approach their overall army. And I my my general suggestion is, is, um, you know, limit your palette to about four or five prime, like primary useful colors. Make sure that they are diversified and not only contrast and having complementary colors, but also in value where you have a light and a dark color as well. So when you shrink all these things down and just have these very tiny miniatures on the table, it's really important that you stress the contrast as much as possible and that you have, you know, a lot of good um, variation in the lights and the dark. So it makes it very clear at a distance what all the parts of the miniature are and how they all pop. Cool. So uh, on to the next uh, little portion of this. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, batch painting. And that's what I'm going to probably spend a little bit of the, uh, you know, the rest of this, um, this stream discussing. And, you know, the concept in batch painting is, you know, you're just setting up a bunch of miniatures to go all at one time. You're trying to paint them in the most efficient way possible. And really, uh, you know, the main part and the thing that slows down miniature painting is dry time. It's just like waiting for your paints to dry in between um, washes or um, uh, just generally wet paint, you know, that you have across. So I'm just going to set up some miniatures here on this, uh, this little piece. And this is, you know, sometimes this is how I actually like to paint. Um, this is just a piece of two-sided foam tape on a piece of just plastic art that I had uh, separate. You could use anything that you wanted to, a ruler, wooden ruler, anything like that. It's just kind of what I had handy. But you can secure all these together at the same time, and then you can just go through and you can just do all of your steps on them and just move through the overall process. So to start off with, um, and a technique that I personally prefer, uh, I think the bases are a very messy step. I think that they take a lot of time and oftentimes they're a bit of an afterthought. So I always start with the bases first. I'll paint them uh, primarily. I glue all the sand and all the material down. I'll be discussing basing specifically uh, later on today in um, in another stream. But uh, the gist is is that you want to um, you know get all the bases and the base coat colors down. We've uh, utilized a zenithal prime here where we've uh, primed them all gray and then hit them from above with white. And then we're going to go through those stages and steps to eventually get to a place where we have a miniature that looks like this. And the first step in that process is applying just the, the basic foundation colors that we have. So the, the primary colors that we have here are black and that green. And then over top of that is what we're going to layer a number of other colors over top. Uh, in addition to that, we also got this base down below. Now I have not dry brushed this one first. I typically do before I start to apply those base coats because then if I go outside of um, uh, the line, so to speak, and I get some of that dry brush color on the on the boots or any other part of the miniature, I know I'm just going to base coat it again anyway and tidy that up in a touch up step. And I've also talked about that in the past, where I think if you know if you are not so um, precious about your painting and how accurate you are at the very beginning and you just dedicate a little bit of time and a little bit of brain space to like okay i'm just going to spend another 15 minutes at the end of all this touching up all of my mistakes at one time i think it just keeps you moving forward it keeps you just getting progress made and it makes you feel better about what you've achieved in the time that you've spent uh, sitting down to paint your miniatures so uh, that's just a general mindset that i think that helps me um I think if I just if I deliberate so much about getting this just perfect and I feel like I all I really got done is I, I painted some boots in the last hour, it feels a lot worse than if I got, oh, I laid down all the base coat colors, I got a couple highlights down, and I'm in a lot better place to actually start to tidy up and finish up this, uh, this set of miniatures as I go. Okay, so uh, for this squad painting, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm going to start off with the dry brush on the base. 
I'm just going to go across all of these uh, right quick and just hit up the bases. Let me just grab a paper towel. Oh, Simone. Here, I can show you the do back if you missed it. Here you go. That's that's the fella. That's the one I'm working on right now. Little Gila monster style. Just for you. Okay. So back to these guys. So uh, my first coat here is I just have that base coat color. It's uh, just a standard kind of darker brown that I have. Oh, I guess one other thing to mention when you're deciding on your color scheme is always make sure that whatever color scheme that you decide upon is not one of like the main and primary colors that you have in the rest of your miniatures. Because if it is if it is too similar, you won't get any contrast from the miniature on the base to um, the base to the miniature itself, and it won't really pop. So like if you're going with an overall gray scheme on all your fatigues, unless you really want to lean in on that kind of like urban camo kind of feel. Uh, Try to think about like, okay, well, if I have main gray as my primary color, I don't necessarily want to have gray bases too. It's just going to make everything look very kind of dull. It would be a lot more interesting if it was, say, on a snow or lava or desert or something like that, you know, to make it really pop out. So just something worth mentioning and something to think about when you're deciding on your on your color schemes. So I've set all these guys up. I have a, a very large uh, kind of junky brush, just a, an old synthetic guy that I got from a hobby store. And we're just going to do a quick dry brush across all of these. And having them all set up like this just makes the overall process go by a little bit quicker. And you might have to, you'll find, like these guys might be a little bit tight close to, uh, to one another. I've kind of shrunk them up. I normally have a little bit of a longer uh, platform to put them on to allow me to get my brush in here to hit all the angles. But I wanted to keep it on camera, so uh, I just kind of shrunk it up a little bit. We'll work with it. So we're just going to go through, we're going to just dry brush all these, this area down here on the base. I'm not really too worried, again, if I get it on the feet or if I make any sort of mistakes as I'm progressing here. So that's the first layer, and now I'm just going to add a little bit more of a bone color to this. I'm not washing out my dry brush at all, I'm just keeping the same color. Water is the enemy to the dry brush. You uh, you want to keep your brushes nice nice and dry for the technique. Otherwise, it'll start to get real streaky, and you won't be hitting the raised areas like you wanted. So hopefully, everybody got a chance to get caught up on what transpired in Mini Stravaganza Day One. We revealed a lot of cool stuff. We talked about a lot of things. We had some great panels, some surprises in there. Hopefully you guys can get caught up. We'll be backing up all that stuff to YouTube um, over the course of the weekend and early next week. So if you did miss it, don't worry. You'll be able to get access all that stuff later. We certainly had a great time, a lot of fun yesterday. I'm looking forward to the rest of the day. Got a couple streams today going on. Definitely some cool stuff and uh, Make sure that you check out the Legion dev panel on Saturday if you want to see some cool new stuff. And also just hear from Luke and, and Michael and Will and just uh, you know have them hear them talk a little bit about the future of Legion and, and what we have planned for the game. Should be insightful and very fun. Okay, we've got some dry brush down on the on those bases. So at this point, I think, you know. When it comes to batch painting, I have this this general theory is that there should always be something drying, like at all times. Like there should always be like a wash. So I want to lead off first in this next process by mixing up and painting the fatigues. And what I've, I've chosen here, uh, I, I opted to go with the fatigues first because I like to work at the most recessed and hardest to reach areas first and then kind of work my way out. Um, in this case, the fatigues are largely the most recessed, but the more I think about it now and looking at it is I think that those chest plates, because I have opted not to leave the arms separate on this, are going to be a little bit tricky to reach. So I'm going to start off with black instead. 
So um, what I've opted to do here is I, um, I like to thin down my paints with a mix of flow improver and uh, matte medium. So I just mix up a batch of that 50-50. And when I say flow improver, I mean like airbrush flow improver. You can just get it from Vallejo. And matte medium is something you can just get from an art supply store. It usually comes in like a, a, a larger uh, bottle or tin. I don't have one handy here. I uh, actually need to go back to the store and pick up some more. But I just mix it 50-50. Or if you wanted to, you could utilize just, uh, just flow improver straight up. But that in conjunction, when it's mixed with standard acrylic paints, just really thins things down and it makes the paint flow over the miniature and rest in the recesses, kind of like a wash, but it's a little bit more opaque. And it serves as just like a great base, uh, base coat for uh, building upon afterwards. So for this step, I like to use a fairly good sized brush. So this is a number two, it's a, um, just a Kalinsky sable brush. Um, this is what I, I do pretty much the bulk of, of the painting, and especially at this early stage, you should not be getting into little teeny tiny brushes unless you just uh, don't feel comfortable with a larger brush. But I think that you'll find um, you know, the painting is a little bit more enjoyable when you uh, don't constantly have to keep loading up the brush, and it just, uh, it just feels a little bit more efficient as you, as you proceed. So as I mentioned before, I want to get in here and I want to get all of this, this darker area underneath here addressed first because that is kind of like the hardest to reach area and if I go and make some mistakes uh, and get this paint in areas where I don't want it to be I'm just going to base coat those areas later anyway so it's not that big of a deal. All right so I'm going to have I'm just going to grab this guy I'm going to have this guy nearby just to use as a reference so this is again what we're attempting to achieve here I won't be able to finish all three of these guys in the next 15 minutes but I just want to kind of show you the general approach and how I'm, I'm, I go about um, batch painting miniatures. Okay, so for this stage, we're just going to move pretty rapidly. We're going to move around and hit all of these helmets, all of the backpacks, the boots, the gloves, and the weapons with black. And you can see how this, this paint is thinned down a little bit. It's uh, kind of behaving like a shade, but it's pulled away from those raised areas and it's already doing a little bit of the work in defining those edges for me. Like that's, that's gonna be a great thing to just put an edge highlight over top of and be done with it. So I do recommend, you know, experimenting a little bit with, uh, with that, um, that mixture of matte medium and flow improver and mixing it in with your paints and uh, just give it a shot see if you like it I uh, I find that it uh, is, is super useful and it's uh, it allows me to just get and adjust these paints um, whatever color that I really want to use I can thin it down in such a way to be able to utilize this technique and this approach And I think the holsters are also this black color. Check out the chat here and see what's going on. Yeah, uh, as a reminder, uh, Dallas Kemp is going to be um, dealing with, uh, I believe it's non-human flesh tones, or is it human flesh tones tomorrow? right after this it is non-human flesh tones so this will be a, a good a good transition if you're looking to uh to paint some aliens maybe you're doing some of those uh those cool rebel miniatures painting some duros and other kind of cool colors i'm not exactly sure what miniatures he has planned for it but uh, i'm sure that you can glean some useful info from his techniques i certainly learn a thing or, or two from Dallas and Will with every stream they do. And I've been painting miniatures for a very long time, but there's always new things to learn, new approaches, and how you're doing your things. And uh, yeah, lots of different avenues you can go down. There's not one perfect way to do all this stuff. So 
take all this advice that I'm giving giving you with a with a grain of salt. This is my my own personal preference and approach for doing all this stuff. Um, it's how I get some things done relatively quickly, and uh, it might be useful for you. I hope it is. Oh, that'd be cool if you did Cad Bane. I just finished painting him not too long ago. I can't resist all these cool characters for the Separatists. Dooku, Cad Bane, all that stuff. Yeah, I'll just kind of continue around here, make sure that we hit all of this stuff. I think black was a good choice here because there are just so many components on the miniature that are in fact black. And I think when I get down into the final versions, because I'm still kind of tweaking this color scheme, to make like the weapon stand out from the rest of the black armor, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of blue into the edge highlights. So it's kind of more of a bluish black as opposed to a standard... Uh, like neutral or grayish highlight that would be applied over top. So it'll still read as black. It'll still be consistent with the rest of the forces that I have, but it'll just have a slight, slightly different different tone to it. I think I did something similar with this Death Trooper. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if it can read very well on the camera, but you can see like this has like a just a little bit of a bluish tint to it as opposed to the rest of the armor plates that are over cross. But yeah, something similar. Field six do back somehow, and you could do that in. Oh, could you do that in a grand army? Can't remember how many support slots you get in a grand army. Or you could just sit down and put six do backs on the table and challenge your friend to kill them all, and just have fun with it. I definitely have way more miniatures in my in my Imperial Army than I could ever field in a single game. I'm actively just trying to wrap up the last few units I need to make a Grand Army because a friend of mine with a Rebel Force, a very sizable one, has challenged me to a campaign weekend, and I'm going to bring it to him. I'm looking forward to that. That'll be a lot of fun. We're just kind of waiting until we get all of our vaccinations in, and uh, and then we're going to settle into playing games with all these miniatures we've been painting for the last year. Hopefully you guys are in the same boat. You're making lots of plans to get this stuff on the table. Or maybe you're just uh, just getting started, just trying to get all your, uh, your miniatures painted. Now's a great time to do it. I was talking to Will the other day. We were uh, kind of discussing, you know, like these these big massive conventions that happen every year, things like Adepticon and um, the Nova, you know, these, these other big tournaments and stuff that happen in the U.S. And how crazy they are going to be once we get on the other side of COVID because everybody has just been using all of this time to just amass these amazing looking armies and all this terrain and all this cool stuff. So when we get back to it, I think everybody is going to be pretty wowed at all the effort. Yeah, I am really looking forward to getting some games in too. I've been playing some games here and there online with people, but it's uh, it's just not the same as being face to face, you know? Okay, zipping around a little bit more. So we got about 10 more minutes left in the stream that we have and Rather than just sit here and paint a whole bunch of black boots, let's uh, let's switch over to another color here. Try to get some more progress made on this fella, or this trio of fellas, or maybe they're ladies. I don't know. It's hard to say. Okay, and again, I'm just taking a little bit of that mixture. I'm mixing it in with uh, the base coat color that I use for all my fatigues, which is. Uh, where is that fella? Here we go. Uh, German uniform from model color, Vallejo. 
Okay. And now we'll just proceed to do all of these fatigues all at one time. And here, paint all these areas. One of them is a rebel spy. Which one is it? Hard to say. Probably Iden Versio. But she's not one of these. And I guess the other thing to, to kind of talk a little bit about, you know, the rest of the squad also has two other miniatures in it. It's got Del Miko and Gideon Hask in there. These two guys. But I have opted not to paint them in the same batch because they have bare faces. And I want to spend a little bit of extra time on them because they are kind of like little sub mini bosses, so to speak. Like they're little, uh, little lesser heroes. So I've opted to leave these two separate. So I think when you're sitting down to paint, you know, a batch of miniatures all at one time, I don't like to go more than five, five at the most, because I, I like to feel like I'm getting some progress made. Um, in some cases, maybe I'll extend it to six just to do a, like a full squad of stormtroopers or something uh, to that effect. But um, I like to kind of limit it on and, and group the miniatures by uh, similar poses or similar surfaces, things of that sort. So... Most of the time, when it comes to, to Legion miniatures, they're all going to be very similar. But uh, if you're, say, painting Rebels that have a bit more variety in uh, their makeup, you might want to consider, like, separating out, you know, like the alien characters. Like, okay, the Duros and, the, um, you know, the Athorian, if you if you got the uh, the upgrade pack. You know, like some of those, and just kind of paint those in a separate batch, and then do all of the humans in uh, in one group. Sorry, yeah. Pulled this away and I was just painting like not on camera there for a second. Just doing my thing. Painting like there was nobody else watching. <laughs> I think that Simone is surrounded by every product release. In a giant wall. We certainly do come out with a lot of products. A lot of different stuff out there. All right, so we've blocked in all these colors. We're getting to the point now where, you know, the the black is getting close to drawing, but it's not quite yet. But this is again what, what I was kind of mentioning is like always have something drawing at all times. So, you know, after after I finish this layer of green, I might be at a point where I can actively start to do some of the black. But if not, the next step that I would go to would be to move back down to the base and base coat the rocks, for example. So you just kind of want to like look at where the miniatures are at, what stage are they at right now in their drawing time, and then just find another area on the miniature that you can move around and just always stay busy and always just while things are drying, just keep keep working on them. Now you can certainly, if you want to, have something like a hair dryer handy to kind of speed up the drying process if you like. Um, that is one way of doing it if you like absolutely can't move on to any other step before this one section is dried. But I just kind of like to jump around a little bit, make sure that I hit all the different areas and then just go through and batch paint everything. A little section down there. Okay, so we've got some base coats down. I see a couple areas where I need to hit them up with uh, so a little bit more black. So I'll, I'll tidy up those belts and things. Be careful not to hit any of the wet green paint that's underneath it, because we don't want this black to bleed into it. We can avoid that. I should have hit these belts up first. Okay, kind of move around here, get all that stuff in there. And then while all this stuff is still drying, you know, because as I mentioned before, I'm just going to go ahead and base cut those rocks. Oh, Big Ben Andy, those guys are Imperial Special Forces and or uh, Inferno Squad. It's a product that came out a while ago uh, for the Imperials. It's uh, available now. 
It's a very cool kit. It comes with uh, you know two additional characters that you can add to your other units uh, in the form of these two guys, which I showed a little bit earlier. You've got Del Miko, the Sniper, and Gideon Hask. They're characters from uh, Star Wars Battlefront Two. They go along with Aiden Versio, uh, if you're familiar with them. Yeah, and we will be backing this up. So if, if you did miss anything and you uh, and you want to go back and review, uh, we'll have it all archived. It'll also be here on Twitch um, for, I think it lasts for about a week or so, but we'll make sure to back them up on YouTube before they expire. So you can always get caught up. And there's going to be a lot of stuff to get caught up with because we have a jam-packed schedule for the next two days. Lots of different things to discuss. And show off and lots of time just to kind of hang out and just talk to our fans and the community. And yeah, it's fun. This is fun for us too. Right, so I'm going to zip around. I'm going to base cut all these rocks. I've also thinned this paint down ever so slightly, so it, uh, it shows some of the, the edges and dry brushing that we did previous. But I'll probably still go back in over top of it and apply some highlights. So now at this point, um, if I were really looking to kind of expedite things and move through very quickly, I have a kind of soft bristled brush here. I'm just going to do like a very light dry brush over top of this black to just kind of get that initial um, that initial highlight to it on the edges. And then I'll, I'll probably have to call it quits here pretty soon. So if you had uh, anything in addition that you would like to, to see when it comes to army painting, uh, make sure to post it in the chat. We uh, we like to go back through and review all that stuff and plan future streams. So we'd be more than happy to, uh, to take your suggestions. Okay, so I've removed almost all of the paint here and I'm just gonna just apply this very light gray dry brush over top of these helmets just to kind of pick them out a little bit, uh, pick out some of those edges. You can still see it's a little bit wet down in the crack. So I have to be very careful that I don't pick up any of that um, uh, any of that paint that's down in the recesses here. But by and large, what I, I really want to try to do with this dry brush is I want to go and I want to hit these edges on the top of the helmet. Like that's that's mostly what I'm after. So I'm, I'm angling this thing and I'm almost treating it like an edge highlight, but it's a dry brush by kind of using the side of my brush going as, over top of it because I'm really, I'm, I'm highlighting this little edge right here that you can see. Going across it and then just kind of dragging um, perpendicularly to the raised edge of that armor plate. Kind of see here. So I'm not like doing kind of standard dry brushing like I did on the base that has a lot of texture and I'm really messy with it. This is more of kind of a controlled, it's kind of a combo of like an edge highlight and a dry brush between the two of them. It's, it functions in a very similar way. You're using the side of your brush, but you don't have like a really fine edge brush that you're using here you're still kind of using the fact that you have very little paint on the brush itself to go through here and just get some of these, these forms kind of defined by with these little edge highlights. And if we make any sort of stray marks that go past where we want them to, we can always go back in with a little bit of that black and shave down the flat area to reveal just a real crisp edge highlight on the very edge. And as a final stage uh, after this, I would add an additional edge highlight to just tidy it up and wrap up the overall miniature as we go. Well, I could sit down and I could definitely do this for another hour or so and try to wrap these guys up. But we have so much more to show you that I have to call it quits. So that's that's the progress that we made here. I think next steps uh, would be is I would apply a brown wash over top of all of these fatigue areas. Make sure that that is drying while I then transfer over and start to um, finish out all this black and do all these edge highlights. By that time, once I finish all those edge highlights, the wash should be dry, and now I can go back in and start to uh, pick out details, things like lenses, uh, buckles, pouches, buttons on these little chest panels, and then eventually go in and add um, 
those kind of final steps here to get that miniature to look like this one. So that little red racing stripe down the side, uh, the uh, marking up on the helmet, that sort of stuff. So that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for sitting through watching me paint some of my own personal collection. That was uh, some progress was made. And uh, I certainly enjoyed it. Hopefully you all had a, uh, a good time and you're starting to think a little bit more about your own color schemes, like how you want to approach your next army project. Uh, hopefully this advice was helpful to you all. So coming up next, we've got Dallas Kemp. He's going to be talking to you about painting non-human flesh tones. So I think he's got some Duros planned, a whole bunch of other different uh, potential things. We've got a jam-packed schedule for the rest of the day. If you want to check that out, you can see that at the Atomic Mass Games website. There's a full panel listing there, as well as a full gallery of all the reveals and stuff that we have shown off uh, so far. So I will be uh, back here later on this evening uh, covering some basing techniques and basing up your miniatures, and I'm looking forward to that. So until then, take care. Talk to you later.